What's up guys, back with another video. Today should be a fun day. We're finally um, gonna mount the tires, the actual tires that I bought, not just those old trash ones that we tested in the old video. Hopefully the E46 is rolling on the new wheel and tire setup by the end of today. Um, Andy's gonna come over and help me out. But before I get into everything, I just wanna talk about the tires that I chose real quick. Um, so you guys know the tire sizes. In the last video that where I hand mounted the tires and did the stud conversion, the video previous to this one, the tires that we put on the wheels were 185.55s on an eight wide wheel. So they look good, but the rear was rubbing like a crazy, crazy amount. So like when I drove it up the road, I was just blowing smoke off the rear fenders. They was rubbing a lot. So I decided that I like the radius, like the 185, but I wanted to go down one size on the sidewall. So these are Axelera 185.50 16 tires. These are the Phi, the Axelera Phi, ones I believe or no the Axelera Phi R's they are an all-season tire um, they look pretty good actually I like the tread pattern on them it's not like a Toyo proxy or anything like that but that's another reason I wanted to get these a lot of guys that run stretch are running like the Toyo proxies or the Yokohama S drives or Federal 595s not a lot of people um, stretch uh, Axelera tires so I thought I would give it a try put it up on YouTube see what other people think see if anyone else runs these um, but yeah, so uh, let's go ahead and hop into the day and stretch these on the wheels. All right, so Andy and I are already stretching these tires onto the wheels here. We're onto the second one. We already did the first one. And surprisingly, we didn't even have to like spray the inside of the wheel with like starter fluid or brake cleaner or anything. It literally, we hooked it up with air and it popped right on. I think the reason we had to um, stretch the last one so aggressively with like starter fluid is because those wheels are so shot. These ones are so firm. I mean, they're brand new tires. They're a pain in the ass to actually stretch onto the wheel, but I mean, it takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it because we didn't have to go to a tire shop. And I mean, these things look gorgeous already. So we're going to move on to the next ones. Let's go. We can take it for a test drive. And um, as long as you're not going like 60 miles per hour, you're not going to feel that they're not balanced. You know what I mean? Yeah, we should be good. Thank you. Do you have the aux cord over there? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no Alright, so we just stretched the tires on, we mounted them on the car. I want to do a left hand side and a right hand side comparison. The passenger side of the car, this side, it's not running any spacer. So these are 16 by 8, negative 12 offset with no spacer at all. And you can see they poke out like a crazy amount. But wait till you see the other side. Let me come to the back here. So there's like no spacers on this side at all. <laughs> I think George likes it. So again, this side, no spacers. Now let's look at the right side. This side has a 10 millimeter spacer in the front and a 20 millimeter in the back. And... It's like Mexi poke. It's, it's like, it does not look good, very good. I mean, it's aggressive. I considered keeping the front spacer on, but it's way too much. I mean, look how much it sticks out. This one's ridiculous. Like this is borderline, like I need over fenders. So that side has spacers. This side does not. <laughs> what, this one with the spacer? Straight lifter. <laughs> Hey now! Yes, sir. He curbs his new wheels. All right, we're doing some last minute adjustments. We took it out for a spin and, um, the rear tires were rubbing like crazy. I'll insert a clip right now of it literally just bellowing smoke from miles behind me. Oh yeah, it's rubbing. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The fronts are actually absolutely fine. The stretch is good. They don't rub at all. I can go full locked. Wasn't hitting anything. The front's fine. Um, the rears though, as you guys can tell, I uh, chewed them up a little bit. We literally went like maybe three miles down the road. We ran to Advanced Auto to get a couple things and uh, 
Now we're back. So we actually, we rolled the fenders on the passenger side and put a, um, a couple books in here and dropped it and pulled the fender out. So hopefully the fitment is good. Now we're finishing up this side and after this we should be good. So Andy's just taking the wheel off right now. Andy pretty much built my car all day. I didn't do anything. I just sat back and watched him. <laughs> Yeah, look at me right now, dude. I'm covered. And damn. <laughs> All right, guys, it is the next day. Um, I didn't do as much filming as I wanted to yesterday because I got so caught up trying to get the tires on, stretch them, fitment issues. We were messing with like rolling and pulling the rear fenders. We were like taking spacers on and off. But finally, this is what it looks like. I'm just going to do a walk around for you guys. It's crazy. It looks really good. The front is ridiculous. Like, yeah, it looks so nice. So the front fitment, we had zero issues. We slapped them right on. At first, we had a 10 millimeter spacer on the front, but it was poking out a good bit, so we took that off. And as far as the rear goes, um, yeah, as you guys can see, I cooked my rear fenders yesterday because, and even look at the tire. I look, gouged these things pretty hard. I took it for a drive right after we put the tires on, and I was just like chucking smoke behind me during the drive. So we had to bring it back in the garage. We had a fender roller. We rolled the fenders, but as you guys all know, E46 rears are a pain in the ass to roll. They don't want to roll. So like everybody's fenders are pretty much just like a V shape like this. And the point of rolling is just to crimp it in. So there's like nothing there. It's like almost flat metal thing. But BMW, they have weather like it's not even like weather lining. It's like anti-rust, like weather stripping stuff that they put on the inside. They fill that like V with a whole bunch of like gunk and it's really, really hard to roll. But we rolled it a little bit and then we just resorted to like two books, popping it in there and dropping the jack. And that actually did something. But the fitment is pretty decent actually. I really didn't want to raise it. I cooked this fender too. We're gonna have to get some like paint matching stuff and get that out because that orange looks terrible but so if you got an e46 325 ci you can fit 16 by 8 negative 12 diamond racings on it with barely any camber adjustment just some tire stretch and some fender rolling and you're good <laughs> i am going to fix in the future we're going to do some rear camber adjustment and i also have front camber plates for my coilovers that i didn't install yet I kind of want to put those in just to tuck this front tire in like a little bit more. You can get like negative four, negative five out of them. Might try and do that, but it looks crazy.